Now that we've created the design of the game, it's time to give life to each of our characters. Today you'll be working on giving specific actions to each character in which you'll be using the coding concepts indent and sequence to make them work exactly how you want them to. Alright, so let's head on and let's start with the codes. So to start off with, I'm going to grab screen one initialize, which is what we use to start the app. Now let's think about how to make the correct sequence in order to make the sprites move properly. We need to set its settings so where it's supposed to start off at first before we make them drop down or in the example of the character to make it drag around. So for the sprites in the beginning, you'll see that the higher up I drag the sprite, so look at the Y coordinate over here, the higher up it will be, the lower the num will become. So when I, when if the Y is set at 0, it's going to be right at the top of the canvas. So over here for my virus and for my sanitizer, I want it to be set at the very top, which is why I'm calling the sanitizer to move to. For my X is a random position because I want to I want to appear throughout the screen. So I'm gonna set it to be X uh, from zero to two hundred and fifty. That basically covers the whole width of the canvas. And for the Y, I'm gonna set it to be zero, so it appears at the very top. Now I'm doing the same for the virus, which is why I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to just change it to virus. Now, for the player, I'm not going to do the same. Because for the player, I'm going to set to be in the middle and a specific coordinate underneath here. So this position is pretty good. The X is 120, the Y is at 270. That's in the lower middle of the canvas. So over here, I'm going to make it... Uh, 120 and 270. Just gonna double check it, make sure that's correct. Yep. And so now with that, we have set how the sanitizer virus and player have been positioned to begin with. Now to figure out how they need to move. So the sanitizer and virus they're moving downwards, right? So we need to set their heading and their speed. So let's set the heading for um, let's set the heading for the sanitizer first. And for the sanitizer and virus, they're both moving downwards, which is why they're both going to be, they both want to have a heading of 270. So we go to math again, get out our numbers, 270, and you can duplicate this too. So now we set the heading, and now we want to set the speed. For the virus, is going to, preferably, they're going to drop down at the same speed. But if you want to make it advantageous for either the virus or the sanitizer, you can make either of them faster. So for the virus, you can make it faster if you want to. Same thing for the sanitizer. And But for me, I want to set them to have the same speed and heading right now. Now, what about the player? How is the player supposed to move? If you remember, the player is supposed to be dragged, right? So the way that they move is that they detect the position of our thumb and they follow uh, whether it goes left or right. So what we do here is that we go to the player and we get actually a very specific block here. This block is called when player is dragged. Let's get that out. You can see there's a bunch of local variables here that we can work with. I'm going to go to the player is. I want to set the player is x because if you recall when we drag it, even if we drag it upwards, it only follows the x position of our thumb. And the x position of our thumb can be tracked using the current x over here. So that means that when we drag the character, we can, when we drag the character, it will follow our thumb's left and right position and not up and down. Alright, so one last thing I'd like to do before I move on with the virus and the sanitizer is that I want to set the player is picture. The reason why is that if you saw in the game before, when the player hits the virus or the sanitizer, when they collide, the picture will change. I want to change back to a neutral um, figure in the beginning of the game. So over here, I'm just going to call it character neutral.png. And the reason why is that you can look within the media, I've set it by the name over here. So it's very clear if I put it, if I set the picture as the name, it will accordingly appear. Now, let's look at the game for now. So let's, let's look at the emulator. And you'll see right now, if I refresh it if I, and I try to begin it again, you'll see that they both fall down pretty well and then they stop. So actually what we need to do is that we need to figure out what happens when it reaches the edge. So over here, let's start with the sanitizer first. I'm going to get the when sanitizer edge reach and then 
I'm going to first of all, let's think about this. So I talked about sequence a little while back. Now is the time where we figure out what steps to really take. So remember, we're trying to make the we were trying to make the sanitizer. We're trying to push it back to the top after it reaches the edge. So the appropriate stance, first of all, we have to think about the steps we need to take. Now for App Inventor and for coding in general, what happens is that the codes follow from top to bottom. So there, so just like how over here, we're trying to get the virus, the sanitizer, and everything to move to position first before making it move. In the same way, we do the same with the sequences. So the sequence here is that we make it we make it look, go to this position first and then we make it start heading downwards. So over here we have to follow the same top to bottom instruction too. And so over here we're going to start off by setting the sanitizer visible to false. Right? And then over here I'm setting this visible to false and then I'm also setting it back to true later. But in between I need to do something, I need to move it back to the top, which is why I'm going to duplicate the sanitizer IS move to a procedure from here. I'm going to put them in between. So now we accurately define what we need to do. For when the eight reaches the edge, I should set the sanitizer visible to false and then call it to move back up to the top before making it turn visible again. Now there's a very huge problem with just doing it like this. We have four edges in our app inventor, so right now it works, but let's think about it. We only want it to do the same, what, what's, what it's doing right now, if it hits one particular edge, which is the bottom edge. So we're going to utilize something in control, a little component here called if then. So this is a computational concept. What it does is that it properly defines um, actions to happen only for specific conditions. Our condition here is that we're to make sure this only happens, all these following actions only happen if it reaches the bottom edge. Because we don't want to touch the top edge and then make it keep moving back up to the top. Or else the image sprite won't fall down. So over here, we go to the equal. And the bottom edge in App Inventor is defined by the number minus 1. So we have to make sure the edge that we're getting is minus 1 over it. So we set get edge equals minus 1 to make sure we're defining that the sanitizer only becomes invisible and moves back to the top if it hits the bottom edge. If it hits the left or the right edge, it shouldn't do that at all. Now that with the sanitizer done, we can do the same for the virus. So over here we can duplicate it and then we can turn everything that says sanitizer here into virus because they actually work in the exact same way. They're both falling down from the top and once they reach the bottom, they're pushed back upwards. So this is how the sanitizer and virus work in orders in moving when it doesn't collide with the player. So what happens when the virus and sanitizer collides with the player? So let's just ignore the fact that there will be a change in the score and the life first. Is there any really any difference from when it reaches the edge and when it hits the player? Not exactly, right? Because at the end of the day, no matter if it reaches the edge or hits the player, the virus and the sanitizer will end up moving back up to the top. So let's just code this in terms of sanitizer and the virus first. So when a sanitizer collides with our player, supposedly what will happen is the exact same. For example, my sanitizer will end up becoming invisible, moving back up to the top and becoming visible again. So we're just going to duplicate this whole if then first. And then we're going to just delete this get edge part. But we're going to, but we're going to put the whole if then into the sanitizer over here. Now, the thing about the sanitizer as collided with event handler is that it can track what the sanitizer collides with. But do you want this to happen when it collides with the virus, for example? Not exactly, right? You only want these set of codes to happen if they hit the player. So this is actually what an if then does. The if then, it, as mentioned earlier, it helps separate the condition. So right here we're saying specifically, we're saying, you know, in order for this, for the sanitizer to become invisible and move back to the top, it can't just hit any sprite. It will have to hit the player. So we get an equal from the logic equal part, logic equal blocks. And then we'll just set this to be the player is. So we go all the way down, get player is. And 
Once again, the design sizer and the virus works exactly the same in terms of this type of movement. So we're going to duplicate it and we're going to turn everything that says sanitizer here into virus. So over here, let's just say when virus collided with the player, the virus becomes invisible, the, the virus moves back up to the top, and the virus becomes visible again.